You didn't stop. <laughs> You're right, I didn't. <laughs> Hi, I'm Miriam, co-founder and COO of Keto Chow. I'm Chris, also co-founder, president, and the technical guy. And I was super technical. We got serious keto on tonight. Yay. Steve Clement, son. I keep on wanting to say Clement, son, and I'm sure you get that a lot, right? Yeah, that's been going on pretty much my entire life. People like to throw <laughs> that N, that extra N in there. Uh, um, people, people throw an L this, in our name. This is the first time... I, I think anybody has been made aware of what my last name is. I've oh, really? never mentioned it in any video oh, or anything like that. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, that's that? okay. It, oh. It was going to happen eventually anyway. Dang it. I ruined it all. Yeah. yeah anonymity <laughs> shot. Man. I, uh, sorry. Well, anyway, we got Steve. He, he doesn't have a last name. Um, <laughs> serious Keto. Um, and, yeah, we're going to be talking to him tonight. <laughs> yes, yes, you were. threw off the Emperor's Groove. Have you seen the Emperor's New Groove, Steve? Not in a long, long time. Not since my kids were little. Oh, wow. And uh, my grandson isn't quite old enough for that. He's all into Pixar mm -hmm. cars. That's his Aww, big thing. That's so cute. Miriam loves Pixar cars. <laughs> I love cars. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly the, the land in Disneyland. Yeah, that's Cars Land. I love but that. Uh, anyway, you threw off the Emperor's Groove. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> no, I'm 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 sorry. Anyway, so we got Steve from Serious Keto. Now, Steve, you uh, do a lot of recipe videos and product reviews and all sorts of stuff on YouTube, right? Yes, I do. So, can you tell for people who don't know who you are? Let's assume wrongfully that people don't know who you are. Um, can, can you introduce yourself a little bit? So my name is Steve, if you haven't caught on to that part so far. And I actually, I did a, a fairly lengthy series. It was a six part series on my transformation at age 51, which was a couple of years ago. I had hit a point where I was somewhere north of probably 235 pounds on a five foot nine body. Okay. Uh, a lot of medications. Uh, I was on three daily doses of two different blood pressure medications. I was pretty much in constant pain. My knees hurt. I, I, I thought I needed to have both of my knees replaced. Oh, wow. High blood pressure, just generally pretty miserable. And I started looking at, and I'm, and I'm a foodie, so love to cook. That was one of the things that I, I actually got happiness from out of life was, was yeah. eating with all of the other sort of misery that I was going through, much of which was self-inflicted. But I, I figured I had to do something to, to fix my body. That had to happen. And I started looking at different diets. And I don't, I'm not a big fan of that word. Because to me, I think a diet kind of feels like this is a short-term thing I'm doing to lose weight rather than yeah. a, a lifestyle change. That's and Maybe that's its semantics. But I started looking at different diets you know, from, should I try veganism? Should I try? And no, I shouldn't, obviously. <laughs> but um, I was looking at Mediterranean, Whole30, Paleo, Keto. And this is going to sound maybe a little bit silly, but it, it all came down to cheese. I'm in Wisconsin. <laughs> I'm in Wisconsin night. I'm like, okay, what can I do that keeps cheese on the menu? And, wow, okay. <laughs> That's funny. And that was keto. So... Once I started keto and started getting into it and watching a lot of the channels out on, on YouTube, I found that there were some just awful recipes. Okay. I found that there was a lot or, or a, a very big lack of creativity and um, and some really poor editing. Not, not to say that I'm great at editing or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I think I, I understand about 2% of what I can do in Pinnacle Studio, but... <laughs> I thought, I wonder if I could do better or, or at the very least, it gives me a chance to start taking some of my vast collection of cookbooks and personally curated, torn out of uh, magazine recipes and start seeing if I can keto -fy them. Okay. Because if this is going to be a sustainable lifestyle for me, I need to take some of those like trigger foods for me and figure out, can I make them keto? Otherwise, I'm going to fall off the wagon. And that was really the impetus for Serious Keto, okay. which turned out to be kind of an unfortunate choice of names, just because everybody thinks that I'm like a militant keto guy, uh -huh. you know, and that's why I changed the tagline to Serious Cooking, 
sensible keto. Okay. Mm. So nice. that, okay. was that too long of an intro? Or no, that, that was really fantastic. Good? That was perfect. Um, now, okay, so you've you've got the you started doing keto. What prompted you to make a YouTube channel? I think you kind of touched on that, <laughs> but a lot of people in the uh, the chat seem to think it has something to do with your broadcaster voice. Well, uh, I, I hear that from a lot of people. That and um, uh, who was the guy that was to to catch a predator? Oh what's, yeah, yeah. What's I I don't remember. Like, what Why don't you have a seat over there? Yeah, <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember his name right now. Yeah, um, but I think I think my voice sort of developed as a corporate trainer. So I worked for GE for the better part of twenty years, off and on. They laid me off like two months before my 20th anniversary. Are you serious? So no, totally that's bad. Of them. <laughs> but, but if they hadn't, I wouldn't be here, which yeah. and I'm so much happier and healthier now. Uh, but, but I was a corporate trainer. I was teaching various forms of continuous improvement, Six Sigma, Lean, Lean Startup, um, influencing skills, DISC, some of that stuff. And you just, you get to a point where you need to learn to, project to the back of the room yeah. without being loud, without shouting. So, you know, kind of developing your voice in a way that that everybody in the room hears you and is engaged. And that's sort of how that started. In terms of YouTube, I don't, I think part of it was my daughter and I, when she was little, had a channel and it's called, it was called Daddy Daughter Kitchen. If you want to go back and look oh, and see gosh, me. Oh that's so a cute. Little, a little, <laughs> back when I was uh, heavier, not, it wasn't at my max heavy, but you can definitely see a, a heavier version of Steve if you go and you look at Daddy Daughter Kitchen. Is that what You Courtney? also see that I was using a not very good camera. I had no lighting. Editing skills were just rubbish. Uh, it was. Hey, that's where we all start, isn't it? <laughs> well, and, and this is when people come to me and they say, Steve, how do I make a YouTube channel? And I hope that I don't get a whole lot more of those because yeah. I, I, that's not, you know, I think I lucked into it, honestly. Yeah. But, you know, usually what I say is if you're going to start, just try it. It's great because you're going to not be very good and there's going to be no one that sees you not be very good. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's sort of like, um, you know, the Beatles when they were playing in Hamburg. You know, everybody was drunk. Nobody knew whether the Beatles were good or not, but it allowed them to to get better just through experience. Yeah. So that's my advice. If if you want to be a YouTuber, give it a shot. And yeah. you don't have to be embarrassed because for the first year, no one's probably going to see your videos yeah. outside of relatives. Well, and quite frankly, pretty much everybody sucks when they first start out. <laughs> And and many of them continue to. <laughs> that's true. Okay, <laughs> but you know that's okay if if they're enjoying themselves. Who cares? You know, yeah. what what do they say? Like dance like nobody's watching. Yep. <laughs> Dennis just popped on. How do I become a YouTuber? Oh, hey, oh, yeah, this, <laughs> you know, you know, I have talked about that. My best advice, you know, I want to I want to start a YouTube channel. Don't do it. And if you do, <laughs> definitely don't start two. Uh, yeah. Right. What okay. The heck? Do, as, what? do as I say, not do as I do. And we're going to talk about lean body mind in a bit. Um, okay. But first, um, I want to talk a bit more about your channel. Now, um, I think one of my favorite videos that I've seen so far of yours was the. It was the sous vide gun. Yes. Oh, that was the, the flamethrower. <laughs> I was I was supposed to be in a meeting, and I was eating my lunch. Of drinking my lunch, if, if I want to be. I, no, it was. I was eating keto chow ice cream. Okay. And I was watching that video, and I laughed out loud, like really loud, so much so that some a couple of the people came into my office, like, "What are you watching?" And I'm like, "Hold on, watch when he turns this on for the first time." <laughs> it was so awesome. <laughs> so that was one of those ones where I think if if. If I could go back in time, I'm not sure if I would have done it just because I I don't know how close I came to setting my kitchen on fire <laughs> with that first blast. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm surprised I didn't leave a scorch mark <laughs> on one of the cabinets. That but the cool thing is, you know, everything you saw in there, that was genuine reaction. Yeah. I, I had no idea 
what that thing was going to be like. And it was terrifying yeah. and awesome. <laughs> um, so use it, do not use it indoors. Yeah, do not use it indoors. <laughs> no, it's, I actually, I really like how you do the searing in your grill mm-hmm. um, when you were actually using it. Um, so now you, you've done a lot of cooking videos. Um, True. Now, lately, you have done a couple of videos about keto chow, which was kind of interesting. We're super um, happy One of our it. friends, he's actually on here, Blaine, he's like, you should send some stuff to Serious Keto. I'm like, he's not going to like keto yeah. chow. He'll he think we're not. weird. And I don't, it's, it's one of those, I'm apprehensive because I don't want to give my child to this person I respect who's going to say my child is terrible. Yeah, your child is dumb. <laughs> I, so... On my side of the screen, yeah. here's what was going on. <laughs> okay. I probably have had people, including Blaine, ask me for probably a year, have you tried keto chow? What are your thoughts on keto chow? I've got all these people asking me, direct messaging me, what do yeah. you think of keto chow? I'm like, never, I'm not familiar with it. To me, it sounds, you know, like puppy food or something like that. I thought it was like a snack mix. Yeah. No, I had no idea. And you know, then I found out, oh, it's a meal replacement. And I, and I thought, well, I'm, I don't want people replacing my meals. I want people yeah. cooking my recipes. Yep. So I don't think it really aligns, but you know, you hit a point where it's, you just hear about something enough. And, and I, I've kind of come to the belief that at some point that's a sign like attrition. Couple, yes. You know, like <laughs> something shows up in your, in your newsfeed a couple of times uh, you know, over the course of a few days, I'm like, huh, you know, I wonder if I should keto that recipe. But back to uh, keto chow, finally, I I said to Blaine, I said, listen, you know, if, if you want to talk to the keto chow folks and if they want to send me something, fine, I'll do a review. Yeah. And that tone of my voice, that's the same tone that was in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> fine. fine. And, and I got it. And I'm just like, I was I was truly prepared to dislike it. And, yeah. and to kind of, yeah, tell, tell everyone Chris's baby is unattractive. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had it. And well, first off, the first probably two shaker bottles I screwed up, you know, I'm, I, I'm not a good uh, instructor. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, the first one, I just like, I think I mixed it with water in the shaker cup, uh, mixed it up, drank it. I'm like, okay, that was, you know all right. And we thought, you know, it's a little bit salty because yeah. it didn't have time to sit. The minerals didn't have time to sort of dissipate. And then we're like, Oh, it, you can do it with butter. And I melted some butter and I put it into the shaker cup and then I put the water in and the I cold the water <laughs> and shook it up and oh, I yeah. was drinking chunks of butter, <laughs> you know, but in a way that's good because I think, you know, that people can see, you know, they see that I'm, I'm real. I'm trying this out. I'm just some yeah. goofball. <laughs> it doesn't follow instructions and I tried it out. But once we figured out how to actually do it and, you know, I, I start whipping it up in the blender and let it go overnight in the fridge and then try it out. I'm like, wow, I like this. And the, I don't, I don't know, you probably anybody that's had keto chow has this experience. You know, you get to the, the bottom or the, you know, the end you think of the yeah. shaker cup, you're like, <laughs> and then you set it down and then like suddenly it starts to pull up bit. again in the yeah. bottom you're like how did i miss that swallow i need that come back here you know like there should be a plunger on the bottom of the cup <laughs> Good. Like, the, every last drop oh, out. Every last bit. I, I bought that measuring cup by the way the oh, one that, the the one that one? squeeze it oh, yeah man. so good <laughs> so good for things like sour cream peanut butter uh-huh. things like that And, you know, so I've been working my way through all of the keto chow flavors. And and in fact, tonight, or it was earlier today, my wife and I filmed the unboxing of the October uh, chow crate. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll keep it, you know, spoiler, no spoilers. No spoilers. (laughs) Nice. Uh, Wait till you see my wife's expression when he saw, or when she saw the little add-in bonus gift. She was... Pretty, pretty pleased with that but she's not keto so it's good to yeah. have her in videos I'm, I'm the only keto one in the family yeah you know to get her perspective so um we're, we're almost done working our way through all the sweet flavors we'll have one more video that comes out uh kind of in conjunction with the october box so it'll be the october box 
plus the, I think, five sweet flavors we haven't tried yet. Okay. And then my plan going forward, and I mentioned this in the in the video, which probably won't release until, let me see here, it'll be on the 6th of October. So I'll be, all the other people that do the, the unboxings will beat me to it, but that's fine. Yeah. No, hey, no, yeah. one, one thing that I want to point out really quick is, um, you release your videos to your people who have joined your channel first, if Correct. I'm not mistaken. Um, and that's an important point because p if, if people want to get earliest access to s the serious keto videos, um, they can just hit the little join thing and they get it. It's like three, is it three days early? It depends. Oh, it depends. Um, I've okay. got a review for, let's see, what, what was it that I did? It's all a blur. <laughs> uh, oh, it's a chalk zero, some chalk okay. zero product. And people are getting that like two weeks early, you know, it's sometimes, oh, wow. uh, especially in review videos, a lot depends on when I've got family members around that can help out and give a non keto perspective. Yeah. And it is, we want to film in that early. Some videos it's the day before some videos okay. it's a week before, but you know, generally it's, it's a few days before. And the, the good thing then is if I made a mistake, you know, mm. in the recipe, for example, and people go to the link, they'll catch that for me. Right. They'll be like, Steve, oh, nice. uh, you, in the video, you said a tablespoon. On the website, you said a teaspoon. Which is it? And yeah. then I can go back and I can make the correction. So uh, I feel like I'm giving them a little bit of something. And then in return, you know, they get they get the videos early. And uh, I get some help from them, potentially, in terms of editing and catching yeah. my mistakes. Yeah. Okay, now you were going to say, sorry, before I interrupted you. Oh, I was going to say that, you know, I'm I'm really looking forward to incorporating keto chow into recipes. Hmm. And I mean, I, I probably drink keto chow as a meal replacement two or three times a week. Oh, really? Oh, wow. wow. Um, that's all. I mean, so I'm okay. saying that, like, I feel like that's a small number probably for, for most of your fans. But I make ice cream now with it daily. Uh, <laughs> since I got since I got the Ninja Creamy, uh -huh. I'm I'm whipping up a pint of keto chow ice cream every day. So and so that's cool. So you had sent me an email saying that you were playing around with keto chow and the Ninja Creamy. We went back and forth a little bit that day. Mm -hmm. I ordered one that day, and then Miriam later on she's like, "I think we should probably get a Ninja Creamy." I'm like. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and then she she found out. I actually ended up ordering two of them. Um, I got the one on QVC that comes with five of the bowls mm -hmm. instead of three. Okay. Um, and it are, we got back into town. Um, and our first day back at the office was yesterday. And so I put a bunch of keto chow. I didn't change it at all. I didn't add any allulose. I didn't do mm -hmm. anything to it. He made it just like we would make it from the package. I actually literally took one that I had mixed up a week before, mm -hmm. poured it in, and froze it. Mm -hmm. And today, we pulled them out of the freezer, and a whole bunch of people around the office tried it. And it was fantastic. It was awesome. Absolutely <laughs> was fantastic. So happy. <laughs> Kudos on the recommendation. Um, for any of you people at home that are wondering what the consistency of me personally, I think what it does is if you've ever had a, a, an ice cream maker that has a paddle and you've made keto chow ice cream with it, either mm -hmm. a, um, compressor one or a bowl one around the paddle, there's usually a bunch of really, really smooth stuff. That's I, just perfect. I have not had that happen. Oh, it's like, it's usually right in the cavity around where... It, I don't do mine as long as you do yours. No, see, I do mine for a long time. I, I the entire thing like of it. the creamy ice cream was like that. It was I think amazing. it was like ice cream consistency. Yeah. Like so, legit rolling in the spoon <laughs> ice cream. And we had a bunch of people around the office who aren't keto. Yeah. Some of them awesome. are kind of, okay with keto chow. Um, but <laughs> this one guy, we got to the root beer. And he was like... Oh, yeah. That's so good. That's good. <laughs> so awesome. Anyway, so thank you for the recommendation, mm -hmm. Steve. <laughs> yeah, so I I think my freezer may run colder than your freezer. Okay. I've got a, I've got a thermometer in my freezer, and uh, I tend to be between minus 10 and minus 15 Fahrenheit. Oh, wow. So 
when I did, and that's not even set to max, but I did my first batch and I ran it through the, I guess they call it the light ice cream. Okay. You know, like so no sugar ice cream. Yeah. And the consistency was, it was like dipping dots, but yes. dipping snow. I mean, yeah. it was, yeah. it was powdery and wicked, wicked cold. Yeah. So then I ran it through on respin. Yep. And then I had the creamy that I was looking for. I had to do it four times on respin. Mm. But but still, amazing. <laughs> well, uh, okay, full disclosure, I had to do it twice. But okay. <laughs> then I started, you know, deciding. Okay, I'm I'm going to try based on what I saw Dennis doing in his ice cream video. I want to see what Allulos does to this. Okay. And I think my first batch I put in. I've, I've been gradually dialing back the Allulos. I started at probably more than a tablespoon. Okay. I just grabbed a spoon and just went. You know, so I'm eyeballing it. <laughs> Super and, scientific. <laughs> and initially, it was absolutely the creamiest ice cream I've ever had. Just yeah. it, like it was, uh, you know, so a big thing here in Wisconsin is frozen custard okay. instead of ice cream. It was like that. It was like it was based in butter and egg yolk, that sort of ice cream. And then it started to warm up. You mm -hmm. notice I didn't say melt. Because temperature wise, oh. it seemed like it should have been melting, but instead it was staying thick. And, okay. and that just became sort of odd. And it started having this strange sort of mouth coating feel. So I've been mm -hmm. dialing back on the allulose and I'm trying to figure out like an ideal ratio of butter and cream and water to, okay. to get the best. The problem, as you and I have discussed in the past, it's one of my fatal flaws is me not taking notes and relying on my uh, why would i take notes it's not like i need to repeat this <laughs> but on the bright side it's if you're gonna fail on a recipe that you need to then eat pizza and ice cream are probably the two best yeah so exactly. I've, even even my failures have tasted good take one for the team there yep so loving loving the creamy i'm glad you're loving the creamy it's, it's been fantastic hold on what did dennis just say uh Keto chow is a lot of the key ingredients you need for ice cream. There you go. Well, and um, Dennis actually has a video where he has, has he's been working on a keto ice cream. Yep, that's I right. actually I like one one thing that I saw Dennis do that you've actually tried on some of yours, which is answering mm -hmm. the questions people are going to ask in the future now in the video. Yeah, and I, here's sorry. No, you I was go just going to say, you're saying Dennis, but people are going to find oh, him as Black Tie Kitchen. Sorry. Just so you know. There's only one we're, Dennis. We're well, on let's, first let's, let's, basis here. You know. <laughs> so, um, you, you know, what I used to do is I used to have on some of my videos an extremely long preamble before I got to the recipe where, you know, I was talking about, you know, here are the do's, the don'ts, what to look out for, et cetera. And yeah. I think people they lost patience for that. You know, oh, they okay. want to, they want to get to the recipe the, people are so used to like the videos by uh tasty. And I don't know what else. Yeah. Oh, super, 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 super sped up. Yeah. So, you know, incredibly fast, just ingredient, 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 ingredient. But yeah. you know, I think that opens up people to a lot of potential failures. I mean, certainly as I experiment on recipes, I made failures, which means I think other people may as well. And I want to keep them from making those failures. Cooking yeah. should be fun, but you need to get to the recipe fairly quickly. And as a result, I, I stole this straight from Dennis, this, you know, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to insert somewhere in the middle of the recipe. Here's a little Q and a, yeah. The problem is people are still very impatient with that. And it's like, well, here's my choices. I can either explain this stuff to you and then you don't have to ask me questions in the comments. Or I cannot explain it, and then I got to answer this a hundred times in the comments. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think that's Dennis has developed a best practice in that regard. Yeah, and sometimes people actually watch that part. Yeah. <laughs> um, so apparently, uh, Randy says uh, the scene where Black Tie Kitchen calls Steve in the middle of the night is great. Oh, <laughs> was it actually the middle of the night when he called you? No, that was about three in the afternoon. I've got room darkening shades that I you know put up, and <laughs> nice. um, unfortunately, I mean, if I could do it all again, 
I would have positioned the camera a little bit differently. You know, as you and I talked about the webcams on laptops kind of going right yes. up your nose. <laughs> when you're lying in bed, you know, if the camera isn't up fairly high, you all you get is just like <laughs> double chin. Yeah, yeah. I look I look about 40 pounds heavier <laughs> in that video. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. So we talked about a bunch of the stuff. Now you have recently started a second YouTube channel, which was going back to the if uh, the, your re your recommendation to people if they want to start a YouTube channel is to not, <laughs> and if they are, don't start two. Correct. So what is your second YouTube channel all about? My second YouTube channel is called Lean Body Mind, and what it is that was that was in a way going to be the original channel. Serious Keto was going to be me sort of figuring out kind of how to work a YouTube channel. Lean Body Mind is about using a lot of the continuous improvement techniques I used to teach. And when I used to teach, I tried to demystify it as much as possible. You know, so lean is steeped in the Toyota production system. I didn't, I used very few Japanese words, you know, kind of just the ones people are familiar with, like, you know, Kaizen or Kanban or something like that. Yeah. But I, for the most part, I tried to avoid the Japanese words. I even tried to avoid as many manufacturing terms as I could. Oh, okay. I tried to make all real life examples, you know, for visual management. When you go to the grocery store, here's some examples of visual management. 5S, creating a, a clean, efficient work environment that, you know, where everything flows and you can find what you need. Here's how you do that in the kitchen. You know, mm. your silverware drawer is a perfect example of that. You don't just have like a big chest that you throw all your silverware and, you know, utensils and Wait, appliances into. You don't? There's, there's a system. We call so, that the drawer of fun. No. <laughs> we, well, we all have, I, I allow for the one junk drawer. We all have the one okay. junk drawer, the, the catch-all. Yeah, but yeah. what I wanted to do is start taking some of these things and show how you can apply them to your everyday life. Mm -hmm. Additionally, looking at some of the things that I've done to just holistically improve my well-being, including you know things like meditation, mindful meditation. And, and then also I'm an absolute sucker for what used to be infomercials, but now it's the, the ads that are inserted into your Instagram and Facebook feed mm -hmm. for various things like, you know, Misen cookware or hex clad yeah. or the Ninja creamy, for example. <laughs> and I just, I see these, I'm like, Oh, I gotta get me that. That looks like the best knife I've ever seen. I need one of those or, yeah. you know. I need this forearm stretchy Audi thingy right here, you know, to build up my extensors. Oh. I, don't know if you've seen, I don't know if you've seen that ad. That's been no, that out. just that just looks like a silicone bracelet. Yeah, for fifty dollars. <laughs> but if you buy right now, only forty. Or oh. you can get out into Amazon and you can get a set of three for ten dollars. So okay. I decided I'd try that, and I would I would purchase certain things that make these big claims and try them out, you know, okay. for some things, if it's an exercise related thing or a supplement or something like that, I would try it out for 30 days and then yeah. say, you know, here's the before here's after here's, you know, I'm, I'm taking the bullet for you. I'm trying this out. Maybe, maybe it's good. Maybe it's not. Yeah. So really it's, it's going to be looking at, you know, things like cooking and, and how to keep your brain nimble. So cooking, not keto, but like just general cooking. general. So, yeah. Um, you know, and then, you know, how to, how to just feel better emotionally and spiritually and physically and to be more productive, personally okay. productive. So that's, that's the goal of that channel. And my hope is that I get good enough in some explainer software, like explain DO or some animation software that I can be making these bite-sized little, you know, three to five minute sort of videos that are entertaining, animated, and get a point across. And it's not just me sitting in front of a camera. Mm. Okay. Um, That's cool. Now that actually, that brings up something interesting uh, that I wanted to talk to you about. So my understanding is serious keto for you is a full-time job. It is. It doesn't so say full-time wages, <laughs> but it's a full-time job. <laughs> um, well, and, and also with Lean Body Mind, have you gotten to the point where it's the channel is even monetized yet? It is monetized. Oh, okay, cool. 
Um, so for those of you at home who don't know what we're talking about, you have to get to a certain viewership and subscriber base before YouTube allows you to put advertisements on your videos, and then you can actually start making money by being a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll, I'll clarify one point okay. on that. Yes. YouTube reserves the right to put ads on any video they That's want, right. whether whether you are monetized or not. I being forgot, you're right. simply means that I get my 40% or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, YouTube's getting paid one way or the other, whether I'm monetized or not. This is just, you know, so initially when I monetized Serious Keto, people thought that that was greedy, you know, that uh -huh. I'm putting commercials or ads on it. I'm like, no, I'm not putting ads on it. YouTube is putting ads on it. I'm finally getting, I'm finally getting paid a couple of pennies. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So yeah, Lean Body Mind is now monetized. And um, so how is the transition from corporate like teaching been to becoming a full-time YouTuber? Like, what has that been like for you? It's, it's weird because you, you miss out on the audience interaction. Okay. Yeah. Like I, to me, an instructor needs to be an entertainer and yeah. he or she needs to be able to read the room and work the room. So I would, I would rarely stand at the front of the classroom. I was moving okay. all the time. To okay. me, there should not be a square inch of carpet in a training room that my feet don't touch. And it's, it's a great way to keep everybody engaged. And, you know, just to be able to read your audience, to be able to read, okay, they're starting to get a little, I think it's time to take a break. It's, you know, they're looking a little bit fatigued or, mm -hmm. you know, I'm starting to see people, you know, grab their phone and, you know, and then, <laughs> like, okay, I, I need to re-engage or take a break and re-energize. And then just when you're, you know, whether you're making jokes or looking for feedback or looking for other examples, you get that interplay and, you know, that, that is lacking yes. in, uh, in a live stream. I mean, you, yeah, you get the comments on, on the side and you're trying to keep up with them, but that's to me, the biggest part I'm, I'm missing, I'm missing that audience. Yeah. I also used to have, I got a fruit fly that's buzzing around here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's an interaction right there. <laughs> also, uh, you know, there were people doing a lot of the administrative stuff for me. Okay. Um, you know, because that was their role in, in the business. And I don't have that anymore. Yeah. I, I am the chief everything officer. So I, I, I need to do everything. Um, and when, when you're alone and you're, you're filming yourself, I don't need, I don't have a camera person. Mm -hmm. I, I have to kind of think through the series of my shots to see if there's a minimum number of camera angles I need to set up. Very often I'll film out of sequence just, you know, because I don't want to have to keep moving the camera around it's it's tricky and that's that's probably one of the biggest things but i'm working for myself yeah and that's the best job in the world well and so i'm assuming that this is something that you're very passionate about sounds like it is and that seems to be one of the hallmarks of it's one of those tough jobs that you'll love it is and you know, I think you and I talked about it once before when you were helping me with OBS Studio. Yeah. Like my father-in-law is, I don't know, 87 or something like that. And he, there's no explaining to him what I do for a living. That's just, mm -hmm. it's so beyond what he could comprehend. So he's, he, he thinks of the world still is working Monday through Friday, nine till five. That's, yeah. you know, that's what he believes still goes on. And you know, you, you couldn't explain like the gig economy to him or, or something like that. Yeah. So when he comes over on a Sunday for, for dinner, you know, he'll be like, oh, back to the grind tomorrow. You know, not him. He's retired. But, you know, he's yeah. like saying it for me. I'm like, every day for me is <laughs> a Friday. Every day for me is a Monday. Every day for me is a Sunday. Yeah. There's no there's no delineation. And if I wake up at two in the morning, which I often do with insomnia and I've got ideas, I've come down to the office or at the very least I grab my phone and start taking notes. Like, Oh, I got an idea for a keto chow flavor. <laughs> actually, I actually, actually have ideas for five flavors. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, we'll talk. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, 
I never know what day it is, honestly. Uh, it's it's a weird it's a weird sensation. Now, how has the whole pandemic thing impacted you? Because you weren't going out out of the office when you were working at home before. I don't. I don't know. I that's that's a tough question. I think. Yeah. I don't know that it's had a, a huge impact one way or the other on my viewers. Okay. And, and really, uh, you know, I don't, I don't like, I don't go out to eat all that often. I, I would prefer to cook. Okay. So it hasn't really impacted me there. Yeah. I think when I do go out, it's generally, I, basically when I go out, I go out for a haircut or I go out grocery shopping or I go on a Costco yeah. run. Yeah. And to me, it's, it's just sort of um, it's it's weird. It's it's weird, and I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy the the social distancing. I don't enjoy the mask wearing. I don't enjoy the plexiglass. I don't enjoy the apprehension that people seem to have now about one another. Yeah, that it's like, like oh my gosh, uh, we got uh, oh, handshake. We got too close. No, we're we're gonna shake fists. No <laughs> fist no. bumps. Uh, I I I don't I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm to me, even though I'm an introvert, I, mm -hmm. I, an introvert doesn't mean like you're necessarily shy. It just means you get easily fatigued in, you know, crowds of people and, you know, you like time to yourself, but when I'm around other people in short bursts, yeah. I tend to be very close, very empathetic. I like that human contact. I like that conversation. I like that to see people smile. And, uh, as a result, a lot of the, the, uh, pandemic related stuff just it it wears me down okay that's all i i can't articulate it better than that <laughs> okay miriam do you have any questions i keep dominating this conversation that's okay i'm used to it <laughs> whenever we do um interviews i always defer to miriam as much as possible and they're like Okay, I'm yeah. like, because I'm going to dominate the it's conversation. because he has all the questions. Well, it's hard for three people to talk, and so I typically just smile if I can. Well, you do it well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so um, do you have anything you want to ask? No. <laughs> okay, you, you, you seem like you were about well, to, I, and I cut you I off. had something before the pandemic thing, but now I can't remember. Oh, okay. But that's okay. Um, it, now, a bunch of people, when it pops into your head, just interrupt Chris. Yes, okay. please do. I got it. Um, Speaking of uh, uh, family, um, a lot of people were saying that they really enjoy uh, when your family comes on and tries stuff. By far, your mother-in-law trying so keto chow is my favorite <laughs> of all. She is so awesome. She's so cute. <laughs> she's, she's just, I like her a little bit better than your wife, who I like really a lot. <laughs> she's so much fun to, to, when she comes on and yeah. Well, you might you might like Terry, my wife, more after you see the next Keto Chow video that we do. Oh, really? Okay. We really sort of come out of her shell okay. uh, a little bit. You know, and, uh, the first few videos that she did any sort of tastings with me, you know, she really seemed kind of uncomfortable yeah. and, you know, didn't know where to look. Um, she just, she looked really sort of nervous and uncomfortable. Yeah. Not today. Not today. No. Oh. Today's video. It's... Um, in fact, uh, and, and even in the last video that she did, one of my viewers said they, they described her as unfiltered, which okay. as a compliment, my mother-in-law is even less filtered. <laughs> well, she was hilarious. We, we can't let her be on if, if she ever has a glass of wine. Okay. Oh, <laughs> entertaining. <laughs> well, that, that kind of brings up an interesting thing. You know, um, she's only been on a couple videos and I don't know, it's when you're not used to something. So getting up in front of a class and mm -hmm. teaching them is something that quite frankly is uh, just, it's terrifying for probably a majority of the population. And then you do it enough times and it gets to the point where it's just what you do. Mm -hmm. um, being on a YouTube video and if you overthink it, it's like, oh, there are all these people that are going to see it. You might be just really frightened. Um, it's interesting to me how as time goes on and we get used to that, so, mm -hmm. to, to what we're doing, you know, maybe you don't do heights. And then you get a job working on roofs. And after a while, you're just walking along and 
you just it, it's just what I do. It's my job, right? Yeah, it's I I started I forget at what age I tried to do one thing a year that was way out of my comfort zone. Okay, just to I don't know it it eliminates that fear. You know, I forget who, who said it, you know, your, your fears grow smaller, the closer you get to them. Mm-hmm. And I started picking things that were just way outside of my comfort zone. Heights was one of them. I, uh, I, I still did a, like a bungee jump sort of thing. <laughs> oh, wow. And it was pretty exhilarating. Yeah. And then I got up on stage with a band, uh, in Chicago. It was, I, it might've been St. Patrick's day which would have been my birthday. And in case anybody's looking to buy anything for me, <laughs> but I got up and sang Mustang Sally with the house band. Wow. And uh, felt I did an all right job. Hard to say though, because uh, I had had a few beers and we all think we sound great after a few beers. We're back but to the Beatles, right? <laughs> yeah. then, uh, yes. Then I think it was when I was 38 or 39, I was, I was 38 and I had gone to, with a friend, the Milwaukee Rumble. It was a tough man competition. So not exactly like MMA, no holds barred, okay. but it was sanctioned by a kickboxing organization. It was a lot of just dudes throwing punches and occasional kicks. And of course, everybody in the audience is you know like, I could do that. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to do that. Okay. Even though I'm out of shape and probably too old to be doing something like that. I'm going to train and next year I'm going to be in the Milwaukee rumble. And I did. That was my, that year, get out of my comfort zone. Um, got hit a lot. Uh, <laughs> I, I got hit more that night than probably most people get hit in their lifetime. Wow. I okay. got hit more in the first round than most people get hit uh, in a lifetime. I was, I was Jake LaMotta in that fight. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I, I, if it had gone a little bit longer, I think maybe his hands would have gotten tired and I would have won. <laughs> did you see what I did to that guy's hands? Oh, man. <laughs> so I, I've tried to find things each year to just get myself out of my comfort zone. And teaching initially was one of those things. Hmm. I was a Six Sigma black belt at GE and the main corporate organization that did the teaching, I think it was called Chloe, like Center for Learning Operational Excellence. They they dissipated and they said, now each individual business needs to find a trainer. And I got the nod for that and was just yeah. terrified initially being up in front of people. Now, I mean, I have been up, I've been a keynote speaker. I've been up in, in front of hundreds of people. So it's something, you know, I guess I would say to anyone out there, if, Here's my challenge to you. Every year, find something that scares you that's still safe. It just, it's like not a rational. <laughs> yeah. I don't mean, don't, don't be handling cobras or something like that. But find something that, that you're kind of afraid of that's sort of out of your comfort zone and just do it. Yeah. You'll live. That's the great thing. You'll live. And the worst thing that can come out of it is you'll have a funny story to tell. Yeah. Well, and that, that's sort um, of a lean body mind topic right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and speaking of that, so um, this year, rather than doing a uh, New Year's resolution, you had a slightly mm-hmm. different approach. Correct. Uh, because I've never held on to a New Year's resolution for a whole year. <laughs> so I thought about, could I do something shorter? Yeah. And um, my dad was an alcoholic. And he joined AA, I forget at what point in his life it was. It was um, probably when I was 17 or 18 years old. You know, and there it's not like you don't, I I think, say, I'm not going to drink for the rest of my life. You just say, I'm not going to drink today. Yeah. Mm. And I'll make that same promise tomorrow. So I thought, could I take something like that, perhaps with a little more positive spin on it, and say, what can I do for a month? Because we can do almost anything for a month. You can commit to something for a month, you can say, well, I don't, I don't know if I can stop biting my nails, but I promise I can do it for one month. I will do it for one month. So I created this thing that I call 24 and 21. So every month you got 12 months, you take two things, one positive change you would like to make in your life, something you'd like to add. And one thing that you would like to subtract, whether okay. that's a bad habit, whether it's just something that wastes your time, wastes your energy, fatigues you emotionally and get rid of it. And each month I would announce, here's the positive 
that I'm going to do. And here's the negative that I'm going to get rid of. And the intent is if you did it for 30 days, it ought to stick as a habit. And, you know, it's not just I'm going to do this for 30 days and then I'm going to go back to biting my nails. Yeah. And I would say I've been mostly successful. I've been successful actually on the big things. I mean, I've uh -huh. bit my nails all my life and I have not bit my nails since, I don't know, January or February of oh, this wow. year. Nice. Uh, yeah, that's huge. Another, another <laughs> habit that I used to have. So this was one of the, the negatives was placing blame. Something goes wrong. I want to be upset with somebody or something for mm -hmm. it. And I, I'm like, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'll just, I, I'll either just be stoic and just like let it pass or I'll accept personal responsibility for whatever it is that happens. So that's one of the things that I've wow. done. That's um, huge. That is huge. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's just a lot of people have played along with it. You know, they've been like, here's my, you know, positive, here's my negative. It's, it seems like it's worn off a little bit. It doesn't have the same sort of steam that it had at the beginning of the year, but uh, it's been just enormously helpful for me because you do, you wind up establishing habits like, you know, meditating, you know, yeah. for, even if you're like, even if you don't do a great job at it, even if it's just like, all right, I'm going to do, I'll do two minutes. I'll, I'll turn on the breathe app or whatever it's called mm -hmm. on my iPhone or Apple watch and just do that for a couple of minutes. Just clear my mind. Yeah. Well, I, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I love that you just had two things. I've, I've been obsessed with atomic habits this, I don't know, year or whatever. Three I read times. it twice. I've been, you know, I've adding little things. I may have read it three times. Okay. I've been, <laughs> you know, adding little things here and there, but I, I feel like we need to have achievable goals to help you be successful. Two things. I can remember two things. Yep. One minus one plus mm -hmm. like that's something that's achievable and you don't have to make it be this big, huge thing. Like your huge ch changing of the placing blame. It doesn't have to be that if you don't want it to be. So like it could be um, pick up my shoes every night or, you know, whatever, but that would still be something I bed. could attain. Right. Yeah, make, right. make your bed, something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear is a great book. I would recommend it without reservation to anybody. There are a lot of really good tips in there. Uh, I love like the sequencing. To me, mm -hmm. that's how I get through the first half of my morning. It's just I've got the sequence of things that I do, and and they just it, it becomes one flows into the other naturally, and and you learn to start to do some things together. You know, for example, if I go out for a walk first thing in the morning, earbuds in, listening to an audiobook. Hmm. You know, and then I'm like, okay, uh, now I'm I'm back at home. You know, I've done some sprints, I've done some walking. I'm back at home. I'm gonna sit on the patio and fire up um, Headspace and do a 10 minute meditation while I kind of cool down here. So you know, I need to cool down anyway. Might as well meditate while I'm at it. Hmm. So the, you know, sequencing. I think that's a that's a big part of maintaining habits. That's awesome. Thank you. Well, if you need a thing that you could do positive for, I guess October you could recommit to your 24 and 21. I'm, well, I'm already, I'm already committed to it. I, I know, I know. <laughs> I picked a couple of ones that were a little bit harder yes. uh, lately for me. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep sticking with it. I mean, it's, um, you try something, you fail, you dust yourself off, you get back up and you try it again. Mm -hmm. You get knocked down. You get up again. You're never going to catch you down. <laughs> I don't know the lyrics well enough, but it was the song was playing yeah, in my head. Yeah, it was. Um, so aside from the Lean Body Mind, um, what other things, uh, what, what's next for you? What other things are you working on? You know, between Serious Keto and Lean Body Mind, that's yeah. that's already more than I can do. In fact, okay. they're, they're not gonna, there's not going to be any videos on Lean Body Mind this week. It's just... It's one of those things I'm listening to the book. I got to look up the guy's name because I'm not going to remember it. And then I'm not going to be able to see it without my glasses on. <laughs> um, so Gary Vaynerchuk, the book Crushing It. Okay. It's all about building your personal brand and your social media presence. And oh. I've got mixed feelings about the book. I will eventually review it on Lean Body Mind promo <laughs> but you know basically it's like you you need to be working social media 
17 hours a day, 17 to 19 hours a day. It's like oh, basically okay. if, you know, sleep five hours. I'm like, okay, so when, when does family come into this? Yeah. You know, when do hobbies come into this? When does the stuff that you're promoting on social media happen? Mm-hmm. Yes, I can't, I, you know, I can't just be out there being Steve without delivering some product. So yeah. that, I mean, just all of that takes so much time. And I'm like, I'm not doing Snapchat or Twitter or TikTok or any of, you know, these things. I, I'm basically, I'm on YouTube. I'm yes. on Instagram, occasionally snapping a picture of, you know, my food or a food mistake. Mm-hmm. And Facebook, I, I kind of feel like I'm there just out of obligation, you know, because it's a big <laughs> platform. And a lot of that is just posting or reposting my Friday cooking videos. All of that takes up a pretty substantial amount of time. And mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting some of the personal life things that were going to happen. I didn't expect to become a grandfather, you know, at, at a relatively young age, and then <laughs> have my son and his girlfriend and my grandson living with us. And, you know, that, that makes shooting schedules difficult because, yeah. you know, when can I shoot? I got to shoot when somebody isn't eating. And between my son and my grandson, someone is always eating. <laughs> yes, but sometimes your grandson is eating sous vide steak. Mm-hmm. Yes, he's, you know, he was great <laughs> at, the, at the taste testing. And now that he's learning to speak more, uh-huh. that's, that's pretty good, too. But uh, mm-hmm. I, forget, I forget what the original question was. Basically, uh, yeah, what, what stuff is do I have anything else going on? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I really want to get a cookbook out. And I started thinking instead of kind of like 24 and 21, rather than thinking of get a cookbook out, I thought of get a spreadsheet together of all my recipes. And, you know, do do they have any special ingredients? Do they require any special equipment? I've got a lot of probably too many columns, but mm-hmm. that's, I'm a data geek. So I like having that information. I'd rather get it up front than have to go back and, and collect it later. But one of my goals with the eventual serious keto cookbook or whatever it winds up being called is that it looks at recipe and ingredient sequencing. So like okay. you make a barbecue rub, what other recipes are using the barbecue rub? Well, the barbecue sauce is being used by the barbecue rub and the ribs are being used by the barbecue rub. Uh, what do I do if I have leftovers? You know, yeah. so I make something and now I got leftovers. I can, I could freeze them. I could vacuum seal them and freeze them. Or could that pulled pork that I made on Saturday be in enchiladas on Monday? So oh, I, want yeah. to, I want this connection to exist between recipes and ingredients as well. You know, you go out and you buy certain ingredients and you're like, okay, I used a tablespoon of parsley, fresh parsley. Now what I do with the rest of this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what I'm trying to really put together in a spreadsheet. So that's goal number one. Then goal number two is look at where there are gaps. You know, yeah. so, wow, I got a lot of chaffle recipes, but <laughs> not very many, you know, salads or something like that. So I got to put together some salad recipes. So I'm just, I'm taking it sort of that 24 and 21 style in okay. bite-sized chunks and, uh, you know, then at some point it'll be like, oh, okay, now the next chunk is learn whatever software I'm going to use to to assemble this cookbook. Do I get all that, you know, do I spend a month getting all the food photos done? Mm. So at what point do you uh, start hiring employees, Steve? <laughs> probably, probably when I start making money, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's, yeah. <laughs> that's been the challenge. I mean, I have had some fortunate events that have kept Serious Keto going. When I first started Serious Keto, the plan was this is going to go like six months. Mm -hmm. And if I if I haven't made something, if I if I don't see a trajectory in six months, I'm done. And then GE had a thing where for all former employees, because they're having some pension funding problems Uh, and they wanted to clear a lot of that off the books so any former employee who hadn't yet reached retirement age they had been laid off or or whatever if you had put in voluntary money post-tax into the pension you could Mm -hmm. you could just get a check and i'm like all right so i don't have to take a tax hit on this because i've already been taxed i don't have any penalties on this this uh this is going to keep serious keto alive for another year wow 
Now, I'm sure most financial advisors would tell me, you should have done that, Steve. That was a bad idea. But my thought is, if I get serious keto to a point where there's residual income going, yes, you know, that that's my retirement, hopefully. Now, a question came up earlier that I wanted to address. Um, we were talking about ads and stuff like that. Um, I personally have YouTube Premium. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend Joe, he gave it to me for my birthday, and I just can't live without it now. Um, I love it. My understanding is that if somebody watches a YouTube video and they have YouTube premium, the creator actually gets more money for that YouTube premium view than they would have for a advertisement view. I can, I, I can't confirm or deny that, but okay. I can tell you that I can see in my analytics that I get paid from people that have premium. Some people okay. that have premium uh, have asked me because they've been concerned. They're like, well, I pay for premium. Are you still going to get money? You know, if I'm not watching your ads yeah. and yes, I do get paid. Okay. Oh, that's good. Uh, you know, so, so that's cool. Okay. Um, but you know, you were talking about ads. Um, I get, I get companies that reach out to me three, four times a week, or I, companies may be being generous in terms of, you know, what these people are um, saying, Steve, we'd love to send you, well, first off, many of them will be like, hey, serious. I'm like, okay, if you don't even know my name, <laughs> this is a problem because I tell, I, it's the fourth word in every one of my videos. Every video, yeah. yeah. Hey there, it's Steve. Like, yes. if you haven't made it that far in any one of my videos, <laughs> probably, you know, and then we're like, oh, we love your videos. Your content is so extraordinary. And we think you would be the perfect partner for our at-home venereal disease test. <laughs> That's the one. I got that. Wow. Um, okay. Or products that are just, they have nothing to do with what I do. And they're like, hey, you know, we'll give you a free spice rack if if you promo our product. I'm like, yeah, yeah. no. But I get a, I get a lot of those. And I say no pretty much to, to most of them. I will periodically, if it's a, a startup, especially, okay. and, you know, I get in, I'll, I'll like read about the people that starting are starting it up and why they did it. And, you know, I'll be like, all right, fine. Send me your product. If you believe in your product, send it to me. I'll give it a fair and honest review. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's how my relationship with Chipmunk Baking started. Uh, David Downing reached out to me and I'm like, mm, I don't think so. I mean, I mean, I'm not really that into cookies. I, uh, you know, that's, I've never been a big cookie eater, but then I got out and I read uh, the story of, of Jose, his partner. And uh, you know how he was diagnosed as a diabetic. He loved to bake. And he's like, I, I love cookies. I want to keep eating cookies. I want to bake cookies. And I thought, yeah. okay, I want to help you guys out. So send me your cookies. I'll try them out. I'm still going to be honest. If I don't like a cookie, I'll say that I didn't like a cookie. Yeah. Now, do you do, I don't think I've ever seen a sponsored video from you. No. And in fact, I just turned one down a big and down this evening. Uh, oh. Thrive Market. Mm. Oh, wow. They had proposed, you know, that, that I start doing uh, sponsored videos and I, I couldn't do it. I just, I can't, I'm not going to give two minutes of airtime yeah. promoing somebody on a eight to 10 minute video. That just, that, that feels not right to me. If it was, you know, Hey, you know, here I'm using, uh, you know, pick Ninja. If Ninja reaches out to me, <sighs> you know, and says, Steve, we'd like, you know, use your Ninja creamy, use your Ninja immersion blender, use your Ninja foodie grill. Yeah. I'd be like, okay. You now we can talk. That's, that's, <laughs> But, um, but yeah, the, I just, there's a, there is some money to be made in those promos yeah. and it's, it's one of those things that it's, it's hard to turn down, but yeah. and I'm not, I'm not like saying, Oh, look at me. I'm so special and you know, righteous that I turned this down. It's just that having worked in, in corporate America and seen some of the things people are willing to do for a dollar, mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to do a thing for a dollar. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it doesn't make me special, though. That just that's my personal choice. And for full disclosure, when we sent you the keto chow, um, I flat out told you that, you know, yeah, I didn't want to exercise any control. That was completely off the table. 
because we just wanted you to try it out. So, um, and I actually really like in the video that you mm -hmm. first did on Keto Chow that you messed up and you kept it in the video. Um, and you don't like all the flavors. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. No, there's a few I really don't like. I, that peaches and cream. That's like hand lotion <laughs> to me. <laughs> that is such a divisive flavor. Yeah. It's hilarious. It a lot of people think they the way they describe it is it smells like old woman um, perfume. Yeah. I like it. I don't know it. that I would go that far, but <laughs> it, it, it did. It, it reminded me sort of, of of hand lotion. Yeah. But, you, you know, if you want to be divisive, uh, release a cilantro flavor. Oh, man. Could you imagine? <laughs> hey, uh, Dennis agrees with you. He doesn't like the peaches. <laughs> but yes, yeah, cilantro is a funny one because and there is that genetic component yep. that some Those people... Taste receptors that some yeah. people have, some people don't have. Some people just, they're like, it tastes like soap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other people, it's got like a very fresh, clean sort of taste. Fortunately, I fall into that category. I love cilantro. Yeah, I love cilantro too. It, it just doesn't love you. It uh, <laughs> makes my esophagus close off. Mm, I eat it anyway. <laughs> I was actually so, yeah, rolling I, the and I got some and I, it was terrible. I thought I was having an allergic reaction. But anyway, you were going to say, sorry. But I was going to say, you know, whenever I've had anybody that I've, I've, I've worked with or partnered with, I always tell them, listen, I've got full creative control. Yes. And I'm going to say exactly what I think. And, you know, when, when I first started my relationship with perfect keto, you know, they're mm -hmm. like, well, we want you to submit a video to us. We need to see it first. And I'm like, uh, uh, no, you'll see it when I release it, unless you want to become a channel member, then you can <laughs> yeah. see it. If you really. That's but, right. Um, I think, uh, to me, to me, I, I kind of enjoy periodically giving them a little bit of a, a ribbing during some mm -hmm. of my review videos, Yeah, because if they have a product that doesn't taste good, I'm going to let people know yeah. if, if I'm like, if, if I fawn over every product there, there are going to be people that buy it and they try it and they're like, okay, this is garbage. Clearly yeah. Steve is getting paid and <laughs> I don't trust him anymore. So for me, the litmus test on perfect keto is if someone says they like the birth, the birthday cake flavor of keto bar, they cannot be trusted. <laughs> No, they cannot. Those aren't even good frozen. We one. have some in the freezer. Do we? They're not very good. Oh. You 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 gave me one once, and you're like, here, you can have this. I was like, oh, okay. Whoa. I don't remember that. Okay, but <laughs> but I do really appreciate that you say I don't like this, but you may. This is what it tastes like to me. Yeah, and then you true. have other people try it, and it's really nice that you have non-keto people try it because yes so many people have non-keto people in their world and um just knowing like what it stacks up against regular products and other things yeah. like is this going to be good enough that i can't hide it from my uh regular uh, people because they're going to take it like those are things we want to know you mean right like the nola bars so yeah, yeah that's so we try and describe whenever whenever we do a taste testing, we try and describe it as what does this remind me of? Yeah. So like the peanut butter or peanut nola bars, it's like a payday without isn't it the payday that has the creamy inside? Yeah, that has the okay. uh -huh. white. It's like, it's like eating the outside part without the yeah. white part. Which That's is why I have people, to eat them. People can immediately associate with something like that and go, Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Or their chocolate chip coconut. It's like it's like one of those Quaker chewy granola bars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. pretty much and it's even um, melted just the same <laughs> and we we actually my son and i it didn't make it into the last keto chow video because it was running too long but we did the banana flavor oh and okay. you know i was apprehensive about the banana flavor because i find that most banana flavored stuff you know whether it's protein powder candy whatever mm -hmm. has this really synthetic taste that just yeah. it's cloying and chemical and just wrong That's so i was i was prepared for that flavor and connor nailed it he's like this tastes like jello brand banana pudding hmm. That and I'm like, yeah, that's a, that's what it tastes like. So that clip, which got cut out from the last video, will be in the next one. Oh, cool! So you'll see my hair length will we'll change <laughs> <laughs> in the course of the video. 
<laughs> nice. That's okay. <laughs> you get a new scar. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, I did. I had, I had like a pimple or something. <laughs> video too. It's like it's weird. You know, I'm gonna years, look for that now. <laughs> oh, you're still young well, yet, right? But <laughs> let me also tell you, the banana flavor. I, I used in the creamy. I feel like this is becoming more or less a promo for the creamy. I need some sort of a <laughs> kickback from Ninja for this. But I filled up the the little pint container about halfway with keto chow, put it in banana keto chow, put it into the freezer for a while to start to thicken up. And then I dolloped some natural peanut butter in. Oh my you know, gosh. Mounds, oh. And then filled it up the rest of the way with that sounds amazing show, and then ran that th thing through the ninja creamy and it was amazing just amazing that sounds terrible now Let's what i'm thinking about going, on, the, on the next batch i'm going to use the add-ins feature you know uh -huh. so for people who don't have a creamy there's a feature called add-ins and what you do is you take your pint of ice cream you kind of tunnel out a little hole right down the center and you put whatever you want to put in there so you know if it was butterfingers or walnuts or whatever it is i'm thinking bacon bits and the peanut butter banana and we oh. call this the elvis oh, oh man <laughs> that'd be amazing <laughs> <laughs> all right so everybody get your creamy before they're sold out the, the creamy has been out for a while though hasn't it mm -hmm. it well i don't know because it when i went to buy it like i'd seen i'd seen ads for it in my instagram yeah. and facebook feeds and i got out onto uh, Amazon and it was like a 30 it'll be uh, like like a, there's a 30 day waiting list or something like that mm -hmm. and then you know, the day finally rolled around that it was supposed to be delivered and they're like oops sorry another 30 days and I'm like you no Mendoza <laughs> <laughs> and then I got an email the very next day they're like no it's all cool you'll have it tomorrow I'm like oh Phew. wow thank okay. you but nice um, gods have smiled upon me. <laughs> but Joe was saying that I par apparently they had an older version, oh, and okay. it didn't work very well. And I guess this one is re very awesome. engineered or something. I don't know. So, but I think it's it's kind of like when uh, the the chaffle makers, the the, the dash little minis, tiny dash the dash minis, minis yeah. when all of a sudden those got on the radar of people for making chaffles, like you couldn't you couldn't find them, like they were just out of stock. It tends to be a problem with a lot of the videos that I do. The plunger whisk. Or plunge photo. whisk. Oh yes. yeah, I still haven't got one of those. And, well, what happens then is it'll it'll sell out, and then someone's like, "Oh, hey, great! Uh, my Steam window just popped up here." That? <laughs> um. So you know, the, the when I bought it, it was like fourteen dollars, and this was yeah. like for the really the really good one. I have yeah. seen people sell that for like forty five periodically during high demand periods it's oh, just wow. had i been thinking i would have bought a thousand of them or more and then just done fulfillment by amazon yeah and, and made the money myself <laughs> but yeah unfortunately well this is another thing another advantage to being a channel member is you see the videos in advance and if i'm using oh. an ingredient or a product like that people are like okay i gotta get that right now because otherwise once this video goes public yeah it's it'll be gone. okay so tell me how do you become a channel member then so there is on any video that i have there's a button that says join okay and sometimes i'll i'll do a little call to action at the end of the video it's right by the subscribe button right yeah is this, yep. does it cost and, more or what what is yes it? Yeah. Oh, okay there's but different levels you don't you don't have to be afraid of hitting the join button. That doesn't automatically okay. take money away from you. That yeah. just tells you, it takes you to a video where I explain what the tiers and perks okay. are. And I've got three tiers. The, mm -hmm. the one tier that everybody gets is advanced views of my videos. Okay. And, and then also periodically, if I'm working on something and I'm not prepared to announce it to the general public yet, I'll do like a, a little picture or a brief video and I'll be like, hey, here's what's working. You know, here's my caramelization test and the latest things that I've seen happen with, you know, non sugar sweeteners mm -hmm. or something like that, you know, sort of a little behind the scenes thing. Then as you work your way up in tiers, you get more access to me personally, uh, whether it's through live streams or email or the Serious Keto website. There are certain things that allow you greater access to me. If you've got questions, if you want to work on a recipe with me. Uh, be a helper, things like that. 
Yeah. That's what the, the higher level tiers are. Ultimately though, it's, it's really, it's a, it's a, a way to get a little closer to me being able to call this yeah. my job, I guess, mm -hmm. or to get that full-time pay for the full-time work. Uh, it's tremendously helpful. I mean, my, I, I try and show as much gratitude I can in any way possible to my members. I also, YouTube does not allow you to, to make a membership perk for giveaways. So I do not have a membership perk for giveaways. Okay. But sometimes I feel generous and give things away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, so a lot of people are saying, so it's kind of like Patreon. Okay. It is, but, and I had a Patreon account for a while. The problem is it, the perks that you can give people are so well integrated into YouTube itself. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, you know, if, if I were doing a live stream, for example, for Patreon people, I'd either have to do some sort of unlisted thing or, mm -hmm. you know, go off of YouTube altogether, go on to Twitch or something like that. It just, it got, it for me, it was going to be managing more mm -hmm. sort of social media and more, more places where I could drop the ball in terms of interacting <laughs> with, yeah. my, with my viewers. Yeah. But it also... To, to give the same sort of perks, it would require more of my viewers. I'd, I'd have to tell them, hey, you got to go out and set up a Twitch account or something mm -hmm. like that. And because of the demographics of my audience, there are a lot of, and I'm not saying older people are less tech savvy, but some older people, are, they want a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. they don't want to have to go and learn a bunch of new software and subscribe to new things. I've got people that are like, you know, Hey, Steve, I love you, but I'm not going to follow you on Instagram because that's one more thing I got to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I feel that too. That's, and like you said, one more point. place to drop the ball, which is why I'm not on Clubhouse, and why I don't do stuff on TikTok. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I completely agree with you on that. So There's a fly in our room too. Is there? Yeah. Lucky. <laughs> it came over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we've, <laughs> we've been on for quite a while. Steve, I am so grateful for the time that you gave us tonight. Um, well, I'm glad that I was able to come on. I, I would like to make one little comment before I... Oh, yes. What, is, what have I been doing? Before we dismiss you. <laughs> <laughs> but I watched uh, the roundtable that, that you did, the roundtable video from a few yeah. days ago. And I think you did a great job articulating advice on keto. One of the most frustrating things for me is the, the the people that have very strong opinions about what keto is, what's right, what's wrong, mm. and want to tell everybody, especially that they're wrong. You know, <laughs> some people are, are very aggressive about it. Other people mm. are more passive. There are certain content creators that talk about, you know, if you're doing my clean version of keto, the proper mm. version of keto, which to me is just sort of passively implying that if you're not doing it my way, you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the correct term is it's gatekeeping. Yeah. Your decisions, your choices are inferior. Therefore, you know, yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, keto, well, I, first off, I would say that there's probably that sort of behavior in any sort of a group, whether sure. it's, you know, Needlepoint or Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> but, but the thing is- Put those two together. <laughs> But if it's Dungeons and Dragons, which I haven't played in over 40 years, there's a rule book. You can yeah. refer to the rules. You can say, well, you can't do that because Dungeon Master Guide page 67 says you can't do that. Keto doesn't have that rule book. There's mm -hmm. no you know, trademark, copyright, anything like that behind keto. So yeah. what works for one person as keto may not work for another person, mm -hmm. you know, there are people out there that are like, you know, no, it's got to be 10 grams total carbs per day or 50 grams total carbs per day or 20 grams net carbs per day, or you can't have vital wheat gluten or you can't have sucralose or mm -hmm. whatever. And you know, I'm like, where does it say this? You know, these are these are guidelines, but they're not rules. And if they work for you, then just be happy that they work for you and, and live that, but don't try and put your keto on other people. And, and, and you, you know, you use the example of like a peanut allergy, just because you oh, yeah. have a peanut allergy doesn't mean everybody has a peanut allergy. Yeah. So 
I just, I wish this is, this is the one frustration that I have with the keto community is there are these certain people that are very militant. I, I, and I got to believe you get to deal with it a ton because I get to deal with it, with it a ton whenever I review any of your products. You know, the oh, yeah, people sorry. that are like, so oh, that's, fake, that's fake food, that's all processed garbage and super yeah. lows will kill you. And, um, yeah, anyhow. Oh. Ooh, that was cathartic. I'm glad I got it. <laughs> do you feel better? I do. I feel immensely better. <laughs> all right. Well, it's 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 nap time for Steve then. <laughs> yeah. Well, now I'm now I'm all jazzed up. Oh boy. <laughs> anything else, Miriam? Do you have any other thing? Uh, me speak good. Anything else you wanted to talk about? Um, well, we just really appreciate you, and we do appreciate your channels. I've been watching both of the channels, and I can't tell you all of the videos because I haven't seen them all. I've just been watching periodically. But we appreciate how you are doing it for everybody, that you're honest, and that um, you've been able to give to the keto community and to the world. Like I, I really love what you're doing with the Lean Body Mind, too, because – being healthy is not just nutrition, hmm. um, for sure. And I think uh, people are afraid of other things. They're afraid of exercise. Sometimes they're afraid of, you know, if I read this book, I have to do those things like, okay, well, <laughs> you know, whatever, maybe, maybe, um, broaden your horizons, I guess a little bit. I know I need to, to do that too, but I really, I just want to say we appreciate what you've been doing for the keto community and for the world with your channels. And it's been, it's been delightful to be able to get to know you. Yeah. Well, thank so. you. I, I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm, I think we all need to thank Blaine for yeah. bringing us yeah. together because, Thanks, Blaine. um, yeah, I, I had no idea that I would enjoy keto chow as much as I wound up enjoying it. And I had no idea that I would become Chris Bear's personal IT project in trying to figure out how to make OBS Studio. <laughs> We're going to get that to work, man. That laptop, man. We'll get it. We'll, by Grapthar's hammer. Well, what to say? By the sons of oh. Mo. <laughs> we will get that OBS working. <laughs> yes, we will. Apparently, uh, Blaine is the Keto Viking. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, thanks, No, Steve. no, he's, I thought it was the Keto Klingon. Right. It is the Keto Klingon. Keto Klingon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which the first time, uh, for those of you who don't know, Blaine has been working on some uh, cooking videos where he's um, impersonating a Klingon and doing recipes. And if if you're familiar with Klingons in Star Wars, Star, Star Trek. Trek. Oh my gosh. Ooh. That was close. Whoa, that's that, uh, that was bad. Fifty percent of the people angry. Use the force, Harry ah. Gandalf. <laughs> um, anyway, um, yeah, he's just, he's been doing recipe videos as a Klingon from Star Trek. He wants to be oh, again. Nice. Dude. There's a porg right there next to the TV, and it's throwing me off. Oh my gosh! <laughs> okay. Fine. Well, I will. Uh, we'll, we'll continue our OBS conversation, and uh, we'll talk about what we need to do to to let me make a couple of flavors of keto chow. Because okay. I've I've I'm feeling good about a couple of the ideas I got. Okay, and, right. and you'll be able to use it as uh, both uh, in its native state and as an ingredient. That was one of Ooh. my criteria for mm. any ideas that I had. Okay. Cool, cool. That'll be awesome. All right. Well, thanks, Steve. Thanks for having me. Okay. Bye, everybody.